So if there was like a Commonwealth Award for doctors, it would probably be awarded to Karen Phelps. You've been an openly lesbian public figure for over a decade and you operate across some very mainstream spaces, both in the context of your profession and your openness about your relationship with your wife, Jackie Stricker Phelps. And we had the pleasure of her in the crowd. Where are you, Jackie? There you are. What motivated you to, I was speaking to someone who was very moved when you came out and spoke publicly about your marriage. She was a young girl at the time. What motivated you to um, publicly speak out about the marriage between you and Jackie in 98? And what types of responses did you receive at that time? And how, as a couple, did you cope with those pressures that came on? We didn't choose to come out in 1998. We went to New York to get married in early 1998, and then we came back to Australia, and our family wanted to help us celebrate, so they uh, threw a wedding party for us for 100 family and close friends. And uh, from that party, uh, the word got out that we'd been married and that there'd been this celebration, and th that brought us to about this time of the year in 1998, which was the week before Mardi Gras. And the tabloid newspaper was looking for the new gay angle. And so we were, it would appear, the elected new gay angle. And uh, so we woke up one Sunday morning to page three of the Sunday Telegraph uh, with a very large photo of us and uh, TV doctor weds her girlfriend um, in the headline. And Jackie called me from the newsagent and said, oh God, the photo's in colour. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> for anybody who didn't hear that, she said "fuck." <laughs> and then we were faced with two very clear choices. One was we could pull down the shutters and hide, and the other choice was that we could take this as an opportunity to do something good for the community. And we chose the latter. And I felt that we were both in a position with uh, the uh, the relationships that we had, the family that we had. Uh, the friendships that we had and uh, our, our position in the community that we could actually make a difference. And so we chose to take a forward step and to come out fighting, as it were, against all forms of discrimination. This was the first time that the issue of gay marriage had actually reached the Australian consciousness. And it's taken 13 years for us to really get to the tipping point uh, in this issue. Now, why is gay marriage important when it comes to resilience? Well, I think that resilience is something that you are not necessarily born with. I think it's something that grows with you. And I believe that there are a number of things that are important to the development of resilience. I think uh, helping young people from childhood develop good communication and social skills is very important so that they can express themselves and have a clear sense of identity. I think it's very important that families and friendship groups are supportive and healthy. And I think it's also very important for resilience that the environment in which we live is supportive of who we are. And this is why legislative change has been such a critical element to the resilience of the individuals in our community. It's because I believe we should have zero tolerance for any form of homophobia or, or, uh, or discrimination in our schools. And I think the onus needs to be on the schools. And I don't, frankly, give a damn whether it's a religious-based school or not. I think they have a responsibility to stamp out discrimination in their schools. And the fact that they have a loophole under state legislation is inexcusable. The second thing is I think that we need to have zero tolerance to homophobia and discrimination in the workplace, wherever we work. And I think that we need to also, within our own social circles, speak up. Now, a, a, lot, of, a lot of us in the community uh, are, lot, are not out. A lot of people are not out, and, and they're quiet about who they are. Now, this is changing. We're becoming more vocal. We're becoming more militant. And this is so important because one of the problems 13 years ago was lack of visibility. And I think that visibility, and Mardi Gras played a huge role in the visibility of the community, where people can see this is who we are, this is how many we are. But it's not just about us anymore. This is about our friends, our families, our workmates, our colleagues, our allies. 
our, the people in the community who love us, who respect us, and who want us to have the rights that everybody else has. And they are the people who will force the legislative changes to come. And it's through complete absence of discrimination that we will not only find equality and fairness and justice, but we will build the resilience of our community and the people within our community who perhaps aren't in a position to be as resilient as many who don't have the friendship supports, who maybe are growing up in small country towns thinking they're the only gay in the village and not knowing that there's this whole community of support out there for them. And it's not just amongst the gay people. Many of our allies are in the straight community. Thank you very much, Karen.